All right, we are at the uh, the second annual uh, Ferndale Green Fest, and we're talking to Jeff. And Jeff, your business is Organic Lawns. Yes, uh, that's correct. Tell us, uh, tell us about uh, about your company. Well, we uh, started out quite a few years ago in the green industry, back in the 70s with wind and solar energy, moved into landscape and uh, got a, a demand for chemical-free lawns. And so we came up with this system. I do have an environmental background and came up with this system about a decade or so ago. And we're using food-grade minerals in the landscape industry. Beautiful. And do you work with both residential and commercial? Yeah, and we're doing uh, some of the city work too. We're willing to consult with farmers, municipal, commercial, residential. Uh-huh. And um, the things here uh, that are at your booth here at the festival, can you uh, give us a sense of what we see? There's some nice uh, wind action here. Yeah, we've got a lot of different things in the booth. Um, the business, other than the organic lawns, is truly green. We have many divisions. We're doing work with farmers. We work with the head of the FDA here in the U.S. We work with a couple different universities. So not only are we doing lawns and landscapes chemical-free, but we're working in the feed industry and the human food chain, taking animals off growth hormones and antibiotics and introducing these minerals in the feed chain, uh, getting off growth hormones and GMOs and antibiotics, and we're into alternative energy too. So uh, what's the impact if you live near, a, say, a golf course that uses a lot of uh, chem lawn or some sort of uh, other kind of pesticide or growth spray what what are the impact what's the impact of to people who live in that that area? Well, it's amazing. Depending on the different types of applications that are being applied, there's many things to address. The number of applications, if they're airborne spray applications, if they're granular applications, what time of year they're being applied, if the ground's still frozen, is it all washing into the environment? Is it after turf production, after the third week of October, and we're still pushing fertilizer that's all going into a unproductive environment so it's real important not only if you're in a golf course because end thing is it's all going down the drain whether it's going down the ground drain or running right into the water we're all drinking it so yeah it's terrible like for instance weed and feed that's herbicide that's 2,4-D direct relative to DDT so yeah that's why we're leading the world in cancer because of what we're not educating educated about when it comes to fertilizer, whether it's the golf course turf or the apple or orange that you're going to eat in your next meal. We are uh, blessed here in Michigan with so many beautiful freshwater lakes and um, there has really been a problem of the runoff of people using things on their lawns that then flows into the lakes. Could you talk about the impact on some of these beautiful lakes uh, over the last decade or two or three? Well, it's many decades, as you say, and the, the terrible thing is the guys or the people or the industry that's done the damage, the worst. Um, sure, the small end user, the guy doing it himself, is 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 got to be educated. How much and when do I do it? But the big guy, the, the chemical companies that have taken and turned our Saginaw Bay into the biggest dioxin bed in the world and taken, you know, our aquifer, the biggest freshwater aquifer in the world in the northern area of Lake St. Clair and Anchor Bay, the seven-mile freshwater aquifer there that's now toxic, too, with PBBs and PCBs. Okay, it's, it's not the fish we're not going to eat here. The fish aren't toxic. They're toxic because they live in the water, and that's what we're all drinking. And that's what I said to begin with is it's all going to run down the drain, whether it's through the ground or down the storm drain, it's all ending in your cup of water. Because, yeah, we're blessed with these freshwater oceans, jewels of the world, but they're useless. They're contaminated. They're just to look at now because we never got educated enough to stop the guys. In fact, this is something I heard in Florida the other day. Dow Chemical said, we got lots of jobs for you in Michigan, starting at $85,000 a year, but you don't produce smart enough children here. You don't produce but one a year, a uh, chemical engineer. Okay, but we produce 14000 a year in our country, but you know what I say to the people? 
people that are presidents of Dow Chemical, yeah, we're pretty dumb out here in Michigan, but you've ruined our environment. And if you're so smart, fix it, because it's now worthless. The Great Lakes are contaminated, you know, and we want to know why you're not doing anything about it if you're so smart. So, again, you work with government organizations, with commercial uh, and residential uh, clients. Could you, again, just uh, tell us your name and the company, and where's your company located? How can people get a hold of you? Well, we're A1 Organic Lawns at a1organiclawns.com, and we're here in White Lake, Michigan, and we do have a phone, 248-889-7200, for those that don't use the Internet. And we're really here not to just sell products, but to teach the do-it-yourself or two whether you got questions on how to do solar, how to grow an organic garden, because very few people do know how to do it. They want to do it, but what's it mean? Is manure organic? Does it have growth hormones and medicine in it? You got to ask yourself a lot of questions just to even get into this movement. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, man.